So should we talk about status of Risk v today? Um, yep, I think that would be a great idea to do that. So the way that I'm kind of looking at this is that a lot of uh, hardware has been uh, coming out increasingly. We're seeing more and more different types of hardware, and the performance is increasing. Uh, but now I think we're getting to the point where we're going to really have very high performance uh, hardware for the data center pretty soon. Right, and that's what we saw last year with the ratification of the RVA23 standard. And from Canonical's point of view, we've seen a lot of demand from our partners that this is going to be the point where both the hardware vendors as well as the software vendors might rally around to in the Risk v to create a standard. Yeah, I think that's really good because I know for a long time the whole ecosystem has really been rallying around the hardware that exists in the market today, which is RVA20 uh, and not RVA23. And the difference is pretty massive when you look at like what comes with the new profile. And we're not just talking about SIMD or vector type of instructions. I mean, even unaligned access or bit and manipulation instructions, etc. And so having the whole software ecosystem standardized around a really high performance ISA, I think really enables RISC-V to go and have a shot in the, in the server space. Mm. Right. The majority of the solutions that we enabled so far with Ubuntu, they were actually running on RVA20. But right now, due to our partnership with Rivos, we're investing by massively into enabling RVA23. And not only that, the amount of infrastructure upgrades we needed to do, the amount of changes to the distro management system we needed to do, as well as accounting for the spatial capabilities to compile things specifically for vendor optimizations. It's also a lot of work that we did thanks to our relationship with Rivos. Um, it's not only about enabling the hardware that is going to come out and enabling those future use cases that are going to be out there, but the main issue that we're trying to solve as Canonical is ensuring stability and security for the workloads and for the open source software that is out there, right? So I think that yeah. this is also somewhere where we definitely need to fill in some of those gaps, right? Because just enabling a new standard, a new ISA, mm -hmm. and the open source software stack on top of it, that's one piece of the story. But the other piece of the story is also enabling and ensuring that we have the same continuity, stability, the same managed services, and as well as security yeah. SLAs as on par with the other ISAs. I agree. Those are table stakes, in my opinion. I think anybody who's going to be considering Risk v is obviously looking for you know, the, the performance or some of the differentiators that it can bring, but it cannot come at the expense of security updates or stability um, that are kind of the expectation coming from other ISAs. What we think about a lot is software-defined hardware, and what that means is that we need Risk v as a tool to build software and hardware that is targeted specifically to different verticals. AI is one of those verticals, which is very diverse, and I think this gives Risk v a great opportunity to go in there and really shake things up. Right, I think you're absolutely right. The, the amount of diversity that exists there, even inside of a single vertical, is huge. So there is no one size, uh, one solution fits all sizes. So we really want to make sure that that differentiation can target those different pieces. And we also see that in software. So we were talking about performance, right? And I was wondering, what is, for folks out there, what is the meaning of RISC-V when it comes to data center workloads or AI workloads and their performance? Could you give us some comments about that? Yeah, I think the way that we're thinking about this is really, with the term that we're often using is software-defined hardware. So the idea being that let's take a look at a specific you know, industry and really think about what's the hardware that can work for that industry in particular. Mm -hmm. And so um, if you think about like the systems that have been popular in the data center for many years, obviously there's a couple of like incumbents who develop very high performance silicon, but they might be targeting the market very broadly. And that's where RISC-V comes in because RISC-V enables differentiation. Differentiation is great. We have standardization on one side and we have differentiation on the other side. From a software perspective, that means for us right. that we need to be able to standardize on something, which is the RVA23 standard. But at the same time, we need to be able to compile certain parts of the software stack with certain optimizations, right? And this is what Canonical and Rivos really want to do together, right? We That's really right. want to acknowledge the standard part, but we also want to acknowledge the differentiation. 
Yeah, and I think that that can be a real game changer for a Risk V uh, ecosystem. And I don't mean just for Rios, but I mean for Risk V as a whole. That uh, enabling that differentiation through uh, whether it's different compilers that are used or different compiler flags or patches in certain targeted areas that really help one piece of hardware shine in a particular area um, can have a huge impact to the to the ecosystem mm -hmm. as a whole. I mean, as canonical, we have a broad experience about enabling uh, Linux-based use cases across a myriad of different uh, platforms, right? And right now, it was very natural for us to enable RISC-V ISA as a first-class citizen. What we needed to do and what we're doing together with Rivos is making sure that Ubuntu acknowledges RVA23 and all the benefits that the new standard brings us. But we're also building something that will enable compilation for optimized paths for Rivos-specific hardware, right? So we're embracing the standard of RISC-V but we are also enabling for differentiation. And we're doing this for the whole RISC-V ecosystem, thanks to our partnership with Rebus.